Hello, I'm Michael Berkman, director of the McCourtney Institute for Democracy. And I'm Chris Beam, uh, managing director of the McCourtney Institute. And this is another one of our uh, series on trying to assess what happened in the 2016 election. And um, for this segment, we'd like to just talk about what did the depressed Democrats do? <laughs> this was a this was a huge shock. There are a lot to, of depressed Democrats. A lot of campus. depressed Democrats. Yeah. Um, there are peop, There are young people marching in the streets saying, "Not my president." There are people in positions of power who are wondering, "What do we do?" I mean, so far as they have positions of power yeah. in D.C. So let's start with the politicians. Yeah, let's start there. So Democrats really only have one power center now, and that's in the Senate. The Republicans have control more state legislatures than at any time since, I think, 1922. And governorships. Something like that. Yeah. They have lots of governorships. They have the House of Representatives. Now they have the presidency. Uh, and so say something about why the, the Senate still, I mean, uh, Democrats in the Senate still have power, even right. though they're in the, remain in the minority. Right, because the Senate, as we've seen over you know many years now, the Senate really operates by uh, supermajority rule. That which is, means which means because of filibusters, you need cloture votes. Right, uh, you, you need six because of holds. You basically need sixty right. votes to do anything. So this re puts Democrats in a certain position mm -hmm. of power uh, to be able at least to uh, to halt legislative action. Uh, a position that Republicans used quite effectively mm -hmm. during the Obama t during the Obama administration, you know, I think they're in an interesting position there. There, there are clearly some areas where Democrats are going to be very motivated, I think, uh, to work with Donald right. Trump. Uh, infrastructure, for Infra example, that's the one thing I was me thinking. Is, right. You know, something Democrats have been pushing for mm -hmm. for a while, and mm -hmm. you put infrastructure together into a stimulus bill with tax cuts, and all of a sudden you have the kind of compromise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you know you could you could see happening. Uh, on the other hand, there are other areas, such as the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, where Democrats can be expected to really dig their heels in, and on some Supreme Court nominations mm -hmm. and things like that. But they have a decision to make because, uh, you know, they have seen that Republicans were really quite effective, I think, in, in wearing away at Americans' faith in institutions and faith in the presidency by never really allowing this president to right, act right. Uh, through obstructionism. Mm -hmm. But it's not in re Democrats' blood in quite the same way, mm -hmm. I think, because mm -hmm. they believe in government a lot more. They like to use government. But that's what I was going to ask you. I yeah. mean, you know, you have Republicans who, um, you know, said explicitly when Obama started that they, their job was going to be to obstruct. And yet from... Hillary Clinton and from President Obama, you are hearing this kind of, well, we're going to see what happens. And we're going to, is that just public talk or do you really think it's a matter of um, political strate strategic judgment about, you know, what really is, is their best play? Because they don't have a lot of cards to play. I'm not sure they know what their best play yeah, is yet. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. And I, I mean, they're clearly looking ahead to two years. I mean, the Democrats in some ways are in a not terrible position going into two years. Midterm elections are often bad for the party in power. Mm -hmm. And because you have- A lot more Senate Demo uh, Democratic Senate seats up. Well, there are, but there were Republican this time. Right. It didn't mm -hmm. matter all that mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, I think you do have unified control of government. So 2008 will become a referendum. 2018. 2000, mm -hmm, yeah. 2018 will become a referendum mm -hmm. on the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. uh, and that might offer, depending on what happens, of right. course, might offer Democrats some opportunity. But it also depends on what they intend to do. Right. Because do they help Trump pass things that Democratic voters that, actually like? They may or, like, right. Do they and then obstruct? risk having people feeling pretty good about what's going right. on. Right, exactly. All right, so let's just quickly shift gears to talk about um, uh, non-politicians, citizens. Um, you know, just yesterday we saw um, young people, mostly millennials, marching in, um, you know, many American cities saying, not my president, and um, uh, very, very angry about this result. What, what do they do? I mean, they're moving through the stages of grief here, right? Yeah. Sadness, anger. They are, but it's also, it's, it's, it's a similar question to, I think, what came up during the campaign some, too, and that is, to what extent do Democrats assist in normalizing Trump as a president. Mm -hmm. And so the claim, you're not my president, is in some extent a way of saying, I'm not really accepting all the things that were said. Uh, but on the other hand, there could be a saying, well, he's our president now, he's going to speak in a different kind of language, we can all work together. 
I think Democrats have some choices to make. Right. And there are going to be some angry, especially younger Democrats who mm -hmm. I think are not going to be prepared to do well, that. Well, the only thing I would add to that is part of you know, moving through this grief is to figure out what your next step is politically. And if you're waiting for 2020 and the election, that means you're ignoring the you 2018 look. election, and it means you're ignoring local elections. It means you're ignoring opportunities look, they to should, organize. They should listen to Barack Obama. I mean, Barack Obama has talked about using his post-presidency to focus on redistricting and state legislative elections. And if you want to build, as the Republicans did, right. I think you need to do it there. Right. That's the uh, slow boring at hard boards. It's, yes. it's not pretty, but that's where politics really happens and where politics really succeeds. And where the Republicans have been much more effective much more than effective. Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. All right, again, uh, much more to come. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll be back soon.